you want to talk a little bit more about Dora in particular? You've mentioned that now a couple of times. So mm-hmm. I, I think you've given the key context on uh, low rank adaptation in Laura, which is a super powerful technique we use at, at my machine learning company, Nebula. We are using it all the time. So taking something like a llama model, um, like the smallest llama model is 7 billion parameters. You can fit this onto a single GPU, and then you can fine tune it using LoRa very inexpensively. Like you're talking, <laughs> depending on the amount of data, it could be tens of dollars to be fine tuning a 7 billion parameter llama model on a single GPU and be able to have that model perform at as good or we actually have some capabilities that we've been able to fine tune to say a 7 billion parameter model to be to be doing things that you can't get GPT-4 to do, period. Mm-hmm. And so that shows the power of this kind of idea. If you have some training data um, that you can be fine tuning with, maybe this is proprietary data that you have uh, from your platform that you've collected, or you could even be using things like you could be using a GPT-4 to synthesize inputs and outputs that would be ideal uh, and fine tune on those. Um, And so incredibly powerful technique. We've done tons of um, episodes on the show in the past, kind of on the individual techniques, including Laura itself. Um, But so uh, Sebastian, how is Dora, this new uh, weight decomposed low rank adaptation, how is that different or, yeah, how's that different from Laura? Yeah, so let me see if I can get this uh, in a digestible form correct on the fly on the podcast. So maybe to go uh, one step back to just give a recap of Laura um, for those who don't have the other episode uh, fresh in their mind. So if you train an LM, you have different uh, weight matrices in the linear layers and also the Q, K, and V matrices. And um, then during regular deep learning, you learn how to update these weights. So if you have a weight matrix uh, W, think of the weight update matrix as delta W. It's basically how the weight changes. And if you keep them separate um, during learning, let's say you don't apply it um, during the forward pass, then LoRa, you can think of it as this delta W, which has the same size as W, as a low rank decomposition into two smaller matrices. So if Let's say your weight matrix is um, 10 by 10, then you have 100 parameters, and you can approximate that with two matrices A times uh, B, where A is 10 times 2 and the other one is 2 times 10. If you multiply them, you get 10 by 10 back, but you have now only 40 parameters instead of 100. And if you go larger, if you have 1,000 by 1,000, yeah, then uh, you have... I think on, uh, on, if you have a rank of two, only 400 parameters, for example. So you save a lot of parameters by um, using these smaller matrices. Uh, this is like a, almost like an hour-shaped glass where you have a large input and output, like the original dimensions, but in this small inner dimension, you save a lot of parameters and you only learn these matrices A and B. Now the rank, um, the size of the inner dimension, it's like a hyperparameter. So if you make it wider, um, if you make it as wide as the original matrix, then yeah, you don't save any parameters. But usually you choose like something like R equals 8, like a rank of 8 or something like 16, something small. And like you said, you can save a lot of time and money um, using that and you get usually good results. And uh, usually yeah, it works pretty well. Um, so you have to still though experiment with the rank size. Now, DORA is an, uh, a method that sits on top of LoRa. It's actually very similar to LoRa. Um, now, the only difference is they apply weight normalization to it. And also, de- so maybe the main idea is more not the weight normalization, but the decoupling of um, a magnitude and a directional component. So maybe to the- explain this, think of a vector, uh, like a regular 2D vector. Um, a vector has a magnitude and a direction. So if you think about a vector in a 2D space, like an arrow pointing in a 2D space, the the direction where this arrow points to, that's the uh, directional component. And the magnitude is how long the vector is. So and you can normalize this vector to have unit length, uh, length of one. And then this, this would be your directional component in a unit length form, and you can multiply it by the magnitude to get that original vector. So you're essentially um, you're just decomposing, you're decomposing a vector into a directional and a magnitude component. And 
they did, so in the Dora paper, they did some analyses where they found essentially that Laura is very, let's say, rigid in how it determines certain updates during training compared to full fine tuning. Um, and they had the idea okay, if we decouple LoRa matrices into these directional and um, magnitude components, it gives the model more flexibility to only change the direction, not let's say the magnitude or the other way around. So it's essentially adding more, slightly more parameters, but decoupling direction and magnitude in the LoRa matrices. So what they do is if you have a weight matrix, um, the columns, you can think of them as feature vectors essentially. And um, they are applying this technique or this idea of uh, decomposing each column in the matrix into a magnitude and a directional component. So they add uh, a vector, a magnitude vector, because it's a matrix with, let's say, 10 columns. So you have 10 magnitudes. And then they learn that separately. And this is essentially all they do, except there is some weight normalization happening from based on the weight normalization paper. But it is a technique. Um, that you can implement in like three or four lines of code. Um, I also, the authors didn't share the code yet. I hope it will be soon. But in the meantime, uh, if someone is interested, I can also share yeah, my re-implementation of that. And based on that, what they found is that this works much better than Laura. And um, not only does it work better, it works better with a lower rank. So in Laura, you need to have, have at least a rank of eight to get really okay performance. And with that method, I think they were even able to get um, the same or better performance with a rank of four. So you can even half the parameters basically and get even better performance than a standard LoRa, which is essentially uh, great because LoRa is a technique to make hyperparameter tuning, oh, sorry, fine tuning more high, um, parameter efficient. And with Dora, you can make LoRa more parameter efficient. So it's essentially um, yeah, it's a, um, almost a free add-on. So it adds a few parameters. Um, so you have this magnitude vector now in addition. But they found um, that even if you reduce the total number of parameters to half of what you would use in LoRa, um, you still outperform LoRa. So this yeah, is yeah. based on the paper. I haven't reproduced all. I mean, I, I probably won't because... Yeah, I don't have, let's say, the uh, time to reproduce all of the experiments. But on early results, I mean, it, it checks out. It sounds cool and it seems to work. And um, yeah, trusting the results in the paper, I think this is a really great technique. I mean, it could be that it turns out maybe it, for some reason it doesn't perform so well, but all the indicators so far are yeah exciting. So I'm actually quite excited about this technique and uh, simple modification almost, but um, great results. Nice. Yeah. And so to make this maybe a little bit concrete for listeners, when we do this at Nebula, let's say we take Llama 7B. So we've got a 7 billion parameter model to start with. When we do LoRa to fine tune, you're adding in additional layers. You're adding in additional parameters that you have to tune, but it's, it's, a, it's a small portion. And so this rank that you're describing, like this rank of eight um, that would be common for ordinary LoRa would allow us, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it would be something like, let's say to make this math easy for me, we end up with 2 million parameters that we insert into this 7 billion parameter architecture. So a very small percentage, I, it, I now remember a specific figure with a lot of the fine tuning that we do, it ends up being about half a percent of new, so <laughs> whatever 7 billion is, whatever half a percent is of 7 billion, <laughs> it's about that many parameters that we're adding in um, and fine tuning just with those. You leave this the original 7 billion in place unchanged and it's just these few million that you, um, that you fine tune uh, and you get incredible results. You don't forget, uh, you don't have the kind of catastrophic forgetting that you could if you were tuning all 7 billion uh, at once. And the key advantage is much, much, much cheaper and faster to train because you're training so many fewer parameters. So it's less than a percent. Um, and so what you're describing there with this innovation, Dora, Sebastian, is that with Dora going to that rank of four, instead of, say, me using two million parameters, I could be using a million parameters with Dora. So two million Laura, one million Dora. I'm, again, cutting in half the amount of compute that I need to be doing the amount of time and money that I need to be spending training my LLM to get the same results. 
Yeah, so it's essentially a way to um, get you really good results with fewer parameters compared to standard LoRa. Or if you want, if you want to keep that um, same number of parameters because it works for you, you get better performance, like better, um, let's say, modeling performance. And also, what's what, what you mentioned is a good point regarding um, you don't modify the original parameters. So. That is actually why LoRa is, I think, also so popular in practice is if you have different applications or different customers, you can still save only one base model. Like if your base, base model is Llama 7B, you never have to modify this model. You can just keep it as it is. And then for each customer, you only have to change, let's say, a few a millions of parameters and save those instead of just updating the original weights. Because if you, yeah, if you up update the original weights, you now suddenly have 7 billion model uh, sizes for each of the customers. If you have 10 customers, it's 70 billion. If you have 100, 700 billion. But with LoRa, you can really just save these um, small matrices and you can leave the original model untouched, which is, um, I think, why it's also really cool in, um, in practice, in inference.